I'm going to share a story with you that is going to shock a lot of you. Nearly 30 years ago, I got completely transformed by the power of God. I didn't go to church. It didn't happen to me in some evangelical meeting. It didn't happen to me in any kind of Christian meeting. It happened to me personally, at home, alone, when the Lord visited me. I got born again. It happened when the old sinful self died and I rose to a new life just like Jesus rose from the grave and I became a brand new creation in Christ. I experienced the power of God. I experienced the presence of God that's just completely transforming. And from that point onward, I was against people who just have a mental knowledge, a mental acknowledgement of who God is and what the Bible says, because just with the mental knowledge of it, it's not good enough. It's like going to the library and reading a book about Queen Elizabeth, but then you can't go and knock on her door and say, hi, here I am, let me in. No, Uh, there's a huge difference there. And that is the difference between knowing God in your mind and actually experiencing him and dying to self and letting him change you into a person that you might not want to be, but it is a person that is glorious, righteous, holy, sanctified, pure, a person that is hated by the world. One of the things that I learned about God is that he does heal today. He does perform miracles today. A lot of the sins that I was completely addicted to, that I was bound to and I was a slave to, God set me free. I knew the power of miracles. And to this day, I believe in a God of miracles, a God that is alive, a God that does heal and answer prayer and perform great miracles. But back in those days, I started reading a lot of books and watching a lot of videos and such from Christian leaders and pastors and evangelists that preached a lot about healing. So I really absorbed this kind of teaching, that God wants everybody to be healed, that kind of thing. You know, just lay your hands on the sick and God will heal people. And I went out and I preached healing. I held uh, healing meetings and, and miracle meetings all over the place. I saw miracles. I saw God do a lot of things. Another thing that I got right into, and that is the power of words and confession. Now, before I was saved, I realized the power of words because of a spiritual experience I had before I was saved. And it wasn't a good spiritual experience, but it was nevertheless a spiritual experience. And so I knew the power of words. But then I got into all this kind of teaching, like word of faith kind of teaching and this stuff about confessing the word of God. And, you know, I had this, uh, I had printed out um, sheets and, and photocopies of, of, of books that are, have a whole lot of things to confess every day. You know, by his stripes, I'm healed. And he sent his word to heal them. And on and on and on it goes, pages and pages. And I would confess these things every day. And I would hold healing meetings. Sometimes I would see people healed, but quite honestly, a lot of times I would not see them healed. I read books about how to hear the voice of God and I'd pray earnestly, oh Lord, teach me to hear your voice and, and, and go with your voice and you know, teach me to prophesy. And I would say a lot of things in the name of the Lord. And like most healing evangelists, a lot of people would not get healed and I just wouldn't really have a real good answer as to why. Because really, it went against what I was teaching, that God wants everybody to be healed, that we should just lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Without a doubt, they shall recover. And so many times, it just wouldn't happen. But I just ignored that. I just denied that. And I just went with the scriptures and said, the word of God is is the uh, is the truth, which is over the facts. And it's all this total, right now to look back, you know, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. To look back at it, it's just total nonsense. I would overlook and explain away and dance around a lot of the scriptures in the Bible that talk about how God sent death or sent sickness. And I always have an answer for it. I was very strong in teaching that God wants to heal you, that God loves everybody and wants to heal everybody. And then 
my daughter was born. And there was nothing wrong with her up until the time of birth. There was a very difficult birth, and uh, her cord, the cord was either pinched or kinked, and she was born clinically dead. The doctors spent a lot of time trying to resuscitate her, and they finally did. She was in a coma for four days. When she woke up out of the coma, she was a paraplegic. She was completely paralyzed. One of the things that she couldn't do is she couldn't even control her tongue. She had to have a trach and a G-tube to be fed. Now here I am, a mighty healing evangelist who always preached that God heals and God does miracles and all that kind of thing. And my daughter was in the hospital. And I met with the doctors and they would say, no, there's no hope for her. We don't know if she's even going to live from, mi from minute to minute. And I would say, just hang on to her life because they were like, well, you know, we should just pull the plug. And I would say, no, hang on to her life. I would tell these doctors, and these doctors were specialists that specialize in these kind of things. Some of the best doctors in the nation. I would say, no, I believe in God and I believe that God is a God of miracles. And their answer to me was like, fine, we respect that, but when is the miracle coming? Because we've got to make decisions here. Do we put a G-tube in or not? We've got to make decisions here. And here I was, a man who preached healing and miracles strong for several years. I went to this church and I told this pastor about how I confess, you know, that by his stripes I'm healed and, you know, he sent his word to heal them and on and on, you know, I am the Lord that healeth thee, on and on it goes. And the pastor looked at me and he said, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I can tell you that I have seen many people confess those things right to their grave. I got angry with him. I'm like, well, you are a pastor. You're supposed to be a man of faith, not a man of doubt. I got angry with him and I left the church and I went to a church that did preach and teach what I believed. So I was very strong in my beliefs, yet I had a situation right in front of me that was a huge challenge to those beliefs. To make a long story short, my daughter passed away when she was three and a half years old. In spite of all the confessing, in spite of all the prayer, and even contacting some of these famous preachers and evangelists that are known for healings and miracles, if I were to drop names, I'm sure most of you would know who I'm talking about. I was backstage with these people, with my daughter in my arms. I had many so-called prophets prophesy that God would heal her. I had many healing evangelists say that God would heal her. Now to look back, I can tell you, what I went through was for a reason. God wanted to teach me something very, very valuable. It changed my life. And this is what I want to share with you on this video. I've had many experiences of this sort, but I want to share with you one more before we really get into the meat here. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I have learned so that you don't have to go through it. Several years ago, I had a worship and prayer meeting. People would come to the meeting, and one of my best friends came to that meeting. And when he came, he was sick, okay? He was coughing a lot. He had the flu. I ended up catching the flu from him. And that flu turned into pneumonia in me. I had to go to the doctor, and, and I had to take this expensive medication, this ex you know these expensive antibiotics. And so I, can, I contacted my friend after that, and I said, like, you came and you were right with right beside me. You're coughing all this stuff. You got me sick, man. And he's like, oh man, I'm sorry about that. And he, he offered to pay for my medical expenses. I said, no, no, no. You know, I, I don't want any money. I just don't, I just don't want this to happen again, okay? But one thing he said to me stuck out to me. He said, you know, I came to that meeting confessing that I'm healed, praying and believing that God heals me, confessing by his stripes I'm healed. That is presumption. You are presuming that God healed you when he actually didn't. You are denying reality and you are spreading the virus because of your stupidity. There are a lot of Christians out there doing the exact same thing, going around, well, by his stripes I'm healed and God protects me, you know, quoting Psalm 91, you know, this thing's not going to touch me, you know, God's got his protection on me. That's not the way it works. When God gets angry, get out of the way. When God is angry, get out of the way. 
Noah had to get out of the way. He just didn't say, well, you know, the flood's not going to affect me. God will, you know, make a wall of water around me and it's not going to affect me because God is my protection. Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah didn't say, well, I'm not going to move out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, God protects my house. He'll burn everything up around me, but not my house. The children of Israel in the days of Moses on the Passover, they didn't say, well, I'm just going to go out and just, you know, business as usual because God protects us because we're God's children. You know, God loves us, so he protects us. No, they had to stay inside. They had to protect themselves. Jesus didn't throw himself down off the pinnacle of the temple just because Psalm 91 says he'll be protected because that's what the devil tempted him with. And it's that very same pride, that very same presumption that a lot of Christians are falling for. No pun intended. They think they hear the voice of God when it's not. It's the voice of their own spirit. It's the voice of their own mind. Read the book of Jeremiah. The whole book of Jeremiah says a lot about presumptuous prophets. And just as a side note, that's one thing that a lot of people get caught up in because it's, it's an issue of pride. Well, I'm so important. I'm a prophet. God speaks to me. God uses me to speak to you. I've got a word from God for you. See how special I am? See how spiritual I am? That is what a lot of this is about. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, direct or indirect, that's what a lot of this is all about. When you presumptuously go into dangerous circumstances saying, well, God will protect me, that is presumption. That is pride. That is not smart. That is not walking according to the word and the will of God. One of our primary prayers should be, Lord, keep us humble. Keep all pride and arrogance away from us. Drain us of our pride. Knock it out of us. Keep us humble humble in every way, in every area of our life and of our heart and of our mind. Keep us humble, not presumptuous, not presuming that God is just going to overlook your sin, not presuming that God's not going to get angry with you because just somehow he just, he just loves you so much that he doesn't discipline you. That's nonsense. Use your brains. Father, I ask you that every single person that got this far in this video would be blessed with humility, that you would show them, Father, what true humility looks like and what the pride that you oppose looks like, what presumption looks like, what you hate about pride and presumption. Give them wisdom, Father. Open the eyes of their heart. Open the eyes of their mind. Help them to understand in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Messiah. If my videos have blessed you, if you find any value in them, I encourage you right now, go through the archive of my channel. Download all of my videos. I give you permission to do so. Download them all. Save them all. Make copies of them all. Give them to your friends, your family members, your loved ones. Because one day, these videos might not be here. Perhaps God right now is bringing people to your mind that need to hear this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe.